Hello everyone and welcome to Air at Military Collectibles. So today's video we are talking about the M1 helmet. Specifically we're talking about the uh, M1 helmet in World War II and the M1 helmet in Vietnam. These are both original helmets. This is a restored original and this is uh, as it, it's it's I've, ne I've never touched this helmet so I'm not sure what way it was when it came to me or was it was restored but it definitely wasn't I haven't touched it this was sent to me or I did purchase this as a restored helmet and I do have the paperwork with this uh, the providence for this helmet um, this is around a 1943 helmet so you can tell there's different ways there's stamps there's heat stamps and stuff like that in them um, and there's different batch numbers the, the M1 helmet itself came in from service in 1941 all the way up until 1985, I, uh, sorry, I think it's 1985, um, there or thereabouts anyway, before it was taken over by the, or it was retired and the Pezget helmet came into production. So what I'm going to do first of all is I am going to move the Vietnam era one and we're going to look at the World War II variant. So here we have the World War II variant. Now, Standard helmet uh, for most services during the uh, Second World War. The Air Corps did have, and the Navy had a different variant, whereas they were able to wear headsets underneath them. But in general, this was the service helmet of all uh, forces belonging to the Americans after 1941. Uh, initially, they went into the Second World War with what they called the M1917, or the Kelly's helmet, uh, which was basically the same as the Brody's helmet. Uh, they adopted that towards the end of the First World War, whereas uh, initially when they first went into the um, First World War around 1917, they were using the American Adrian helmet. So, uh, like with life cycles in the American Army with helmets, you can pretty much, you have the Kelly's helmet, 1917 helmet, you have this, um, the M1 helmet, all the way up until 85 when you have the Pezget helmet and then you have different variants of the Pezget helmet or the Kevlar helmet right up until the present day. Um, so that's pretty much the lineage of the American helmets. So we'll just take the mannequin's head off of this and we'll talk to you a bit more about this. So I'll just put it on the table here a second. Can it still be seen? It can be. So the, if I, I don't know if you can make it out but in the actual paint of this World War II restoration. Now this is an original shell and the inside or the liner is original as well. Um, the webbing has been done, it has been repainted. Now you can actually tell here at the knots of this, this is an early or original um, net cover as well because the modern ones, they're not actually tied, the knots aren't actually tied, they're just looped over each other and uh, the way they're manufactured so that's a, a little interesting thing you want to look at but inside the paint here there's actually a chalk or not a chalk uh, cork in the paint um, so that's one way to tell as well so when you look at the actual liner uh, I'll show you on the Vietnam helmet but you see the actual liner there's a, a circle here with a loop for the crane uh, or the crown of the head and oh, I don't know if you can barely make it out now the light might be very bad but just here um, if I don't have a light but just here in the in the top of the helmet is a little stamp that tells you the um, manufacturer and the date of your liner now the, uh, the early liners or the most liners you'll see this green or dark brown fiberglass it's like a leopard skin uh, effect or tiger stripe effect so that's, uh, you see that on most of the liners. Now the M1 from the Vietnam is slightly different, but we'll get to that later on. And here you can see all the webbing has been changed out. And so yeah, so this is my little pride and joy in relation to my World War II collection. It's probably the um, most expensive World War II helmet that I have. Um, and I do, as I said, I do have the paperwork, I do have the provenance with this as well. That is one thing when you're buying original stuff is you need the, depending who you're getting it off, uh, 
you need them to provide you with um, paperwork and stuff like that to say it is original or to the best of their understanding it is original and stuff like that so that's the uh, World War II version and we will go to the Vietnam version. Now I did cover these videos or uh, these um, i just put this on a I hate to stand it up for a second. I did cover these, uh, oops, sorry, I did cover these before, but not in depth, and people have been asking me to do them in depth. Uh, so that's what we're doing. So this is the Vietnam one with the Mitchell cover. Um, you can actually tell different types of Mitchell covers as well. This is a late 60s one, and I'll show you how you can tell that um, later on. Now, I just want to show you this stuff here at the back, this helmet art or whatever you want to call it this is original can opener or beer opener it's original cigarettes and I just because this is very flimsy i don't want to uh to be too rough with them but there is actually original cigarettes in there so yeah so this is how the helmet came to me i've never touched it i've never done anything with it no i do have paperwork for this as well so this is original um although the liner the liner is a, there is a question about the liner that i'm not 100 percent sure with but original spoon and original mosquito repellent now the, the bottle is original but the stuff on the inside was actually just water because the the um mosquito repellent itself will eat through the plastic after a while and then we just have a 7.62 round behind the grade 8 pin on the front as a bit of modern art or Vietnam art or whatever you want to call it so we just look at the inside of the liner so as you can see the liner is slightly different compared to the World War 2 version now it's a bit of a lime green now the lime green was used for very very late 70s um, so that's my issue with this liner now it has a NATO stop number. I don't know if you can make it out. No, you definitely can't make it out. It's very dark. Sorry, excuse me. Just after hitting the camera. But there is a NATO number down there. Um, when I run that NATO number, it is saying that it is coming up um, in the uh, 6970. But from what I can find on forums and stuff, then this should be the same as the Tiger Stripe, the actual liner itself. So I'm not 100% sure about the liner. Um, it is a period correct liner. Um, bar the colour. So that's the main thing that's bothering me is the colour. So I'm not 100% sure about that. Now you see the main strap here is different compared to... Um, the light is very dark with this one. But the main strap is different compared to the World War II variant. And then here you have three little lugs for a nape. A nape. Uh, strap if you want to wear a nape strap so I'm just going to take out the liner and I'll briefly show you how you can tell your actual if I can find it there we go on the inside of the liner this is reversed obviously um, is it the, is the tan version or the desert version or the of whatever the Mitchell cover now you see this number here at the bottom so you have your NATO stock number and then this one here that's ending in 6833. Uh, that is the actual batch number. So if you run that batch number, it will tell you when your helmet was actually, or when your cover was actually made. Um, so yeah, now this does, ironically, if you could smell this helmet, this has the, uh, that surplus, I've been around the bush helmet um, smell about it and the cover is worn it, it, it looks correct it, it, you can tell whether something is new um, like this is worn where it should be worn and the top where it's been sitting upside down and wear that you don't get like around the edge of it wear that you don't get unless that helmet has been used and, and been roughed around a bit and no, I just have to line her in a small bit wrong there you go so that's the liner back in properly. So yeah, so that's your M1 helmet Vietnam and your M1 helmet World War II. 
So guys, I hope you liked what we provide here at Air at Military Collectibles. If you like what we provide, please like, please subscribe and please tune in for the next video. And if you want to get in contact with the channel, as always at the top of the video description, there is an email. Thank you very much and see you again.